Hi everybody, this is Craig Tanner for the Mindful Eye and the Daily Critique. Today's critique is essentially a part two of yesterday's critique where we looked at a beautiful macro shot from Central Park in New York City that was created by Harriet. One of the things that I talked about in yesterday's critique was potentially taking three versions of Harriet's image where we change the hues of color, created different color combinations, and we took those three versions of her image, put them on one canvas, to create a triptych. I wanted to do that work today and give you a really nice technique for doing the work of taking a series of images, selecting them, loading them into one file in Photoshop as layers, and then using several other techniques to create a background canvas for all three of those images to complete a triptych or a diptych or any number of images that you'd like to put on one canvas. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to Bridge. I've already taken Harriet's image and I've created three versions of it using the hue saturation adjustment layer. So we have three images now that have different color combinations. When I'm browsing my files that I want to turn into a diptych or triptych or a finished piece that has even more images on one canvas, I want to locate the folder where I have those images, click on one image, and then shift click to the end of the stack of images that I want to put in as layers so I have all of them selected. I'm going to go to Tools, Photoshop, Load Files into Photoshop as layers. We're going to see all three of these images now showing up in one file as layers. I'm going to hold down the Z key to bring up the Zoom tool, and then I'm going to hold down the Option key. And I'm going to make this image much smaller. I'm going to hit the F key to go into full screen viewing mode and I'm going to make it smaller even still. Um, I'm going to hold down the Z key and hold down Option to make this smaller so that we have plenty of room to see the work that we're going to do. Once I'm at this point, I'm going to hit V, which is a shortcut for the Move tool. And I want to make sure that I have this option and the toolbar option selected. I want to make sure I check Auto Select. That means that when I click with the Move tool, I will automatically select the layer that I am clicking on and that will be the layer that will be moved. I want to come all the way over to the left here. I want to click and I'm going to hold down the shift key which will keep this in line with the layer below it and I'm going to take this layer and slide it all the way off of the background until I see the bounding box come all the way off and I see the layer at the top of the stack get empty. Then I'm going to let go now, still working with the Move tool, I'm going to click on the far right-hand side of this layer. We see the middle layer is active now because the top layer has been moved off of the stack. I'm going to use the same technique. I'm holding down, I'm going to slide, I'm going to hold down the Shift key at the same time, and I'm going to move this image all the way off of the background. I can see the bounding box is all the way off, and I can see that the middle layer is empty. I'm going to let go. Now I'm going to go to Image, Reveal All, and I need to move this back over into our viewing screen here. By going to Image, Reveal All, I now have increased the canvas so that I can see all three of the images. I'm now going to hit C for the Crop Tool, and I'm going to move the Crop Tool around all three images. I'm going to hold down the Option key on a Mac, Alt on a PC, and I'm going to extend my canvas equidistant on the Y axis. I'm going to do the same thing over here on the X axis. I'm going to click and then hold down the Option key, and I'm going to extend my canvas equidistant on the Y axis. And now I'm going to double click inside of the image or hit Enter and bring this back in so that we can see it. And I now have increased my canvas size all the way around. I'm going to click on this bottom layer while holding down Command on a Mac or Control on a PC. I'm going to click on Add a New Layer and that will make it come in at the bottom of the stack. I now have a blank layer that's the size of the whole canvas and we can fill this now with any value or any color that we want. I'm a traditionalist, uh, almost any diptych or triptych or collection of images on one canvas that I would create would have a white background. So I could either from here with white as my background color do a command delete on a Mac or control delete on a PC or I could go up here to edit 
fill and in this dialog box I can use black 50% gray or white or go here to the color picker to choose any color maybe I already have a foreground or background color that I like besides black or white so I could go here and then hit OK we've already done that work so I'm going to cancel this from here if I want to make these horizontal centers equidistant in the way that I have this set up what I want to do is select all three layers by clicking on one, shift clicking to the top of the stack, hit V for the move tool, and I go right here to this tool. If I hold it, that my keyboard over it, it will let me know what these different um, options up here will do in terms of managing the image. And I want to find the one right here that says distribute horizontal centers. And I click on that, it centered these two spaces. From here, if I want to cut down on the space around the outside of the image, I could go back um, and use the crop tool uh, to do that work. Let's hit Z for the zoom tool and make this a little bit bigger so that we can enjoy it at a bigger size. Here is the triptych that we, in theory, talked about creating from Harriet's image yesterday. Really like the way this looks. Just such a beautiful image to start off with. And you can really see with the color possibilities here, just sort of limitless in terms playing with this image in this way with either the idea of creating a diptych or a triptych. We'd love to hear your feedback about the Daily Critique video today. I want to say a huge thank you again to Harriet for sharing such a beautiful image with us for us to start the work. And we hope to see you again very soon on another episode of the Daily Critique.